For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance programs, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Joint Venture Due Diligence When you bring two entities together to operate jointly, there are several difficult issues to analyze. For the U.S. company operating under the FCPA, there must be an adequate business justification for a joint venture with a specific partner, all in writing and approved by an appropriate level of the organization. At this point, the U.S. company must engage in do a due diligence review of the proposed joint venture partner. FCPA compliance expert Mike Volkov has noted this is where due diligence comes into play. The due diligence process should be built on similar principles or principles similar to those involving third parties. The procedure should be robust, documented, and address all the potential risks involved. A business should use its due diligence review of the third party partner to properly assess and uncover any corruption risk. Using this due diligence and its evaluation, you can then move forward to contractual certifications, representations, and warranties from a JV partner or insist on other remedial measures to minimize the risks. So what are some of the things you should ask for in the uh, due diligence review? And here I would like to call upon Dennis Haste, the General Counsel and Chief Compliance Officer at Steel Compliance Solutions, in an article he wrote entitled Guilt by Association, Transactional Joint Ventures in the FCPA for some excellent information regarding uh, what you need to ask for to begin due diligence. So Dennis breaks it down into seven different parts, and I'm going to go through each one of these uh, and describe what he has suggested you get. You will note in the show notes we have the full listing of this, so if if you didn't pick it up in the podcast, You can certainly look at the show notes, and the specific information is there. So entity information. You want the name, any DBAs, previous names, physical address, contact information, website address. Legal structure, organization, excuse me, jurisdiction of organization, when it was organized and where it's traded. Any entity registration number, dates and places of registration, number of years in business. If there's a tax license or a business license, you want to get copies of those. Description of the business, any customers and industry sectors. You want names and contact information for the main point of contact at your potential JV partner. And then you want uh, some contact information for the entity's uh, p- p- proposed JV partners outside accountants and auditors and primary legal contact. You're certainly going to want ownership information. This would include the name, address, nationality, and percentage ownership and acquisition of each parent, uh, each person for the parent company, up to the ultimate parent. The name, nationality, and percentage ownership for all shareholders and owners. And then any of any other persons that have direct or indirect interest in the entity's equity, revenues, or profits. Identity of any person able to exercise control over the entity through an arrangement or relationship. Information on any direct or indirect ownership by a government, government employer, official, or that of a state-owned enterprise as well. Number three, management information. Name, address, nationality for each of the entity's governing board, for each of the officers of the entity, for uh, information on the business affiliations of the principals, owners, partners, directors, or key employees who will manage the business relationship, and any principals who have been uh, public officials, candidates, 
political party members work for state-owned enterprise. Number four, government relationships. Here you need to take a look at information on the principals and whether or not they've held any uh, government offices or they're holding government offices. Information on whether any owners, directors, etc. have an immediate family member who is a employer or official of a foreign government or of a state-owned enterprise. Information on whether an employee <clears throat> is a consultant to a government or state-owned enterprise. And then an approximate percentage of the entity's overall annual sales derived from government sales. Number five is business conduct. And here you want information on whether the entity has ever been barred or suspended from doing business with a, another government entity or a government entity. Information on whether the principles are identified on any governmental designated nationals, blocked persons, sanctions, embargoed, or denied persons lists. Information on whether any of these people's people are alleged to have or have been convicted of engaging in fraud, bribery, misrepresentation, or other criminal act. Information on whether the entity and its principles have ever been investigated for violating the FCPA or some other anti-corruption law. And then finally, information on whether the entity has a compliance program, which includes the prevention of bribery and information on training of the employees. Number six, references. You want three or more business references, unrelated, usually including a bank and an existing client. Then, of course, number seven, certifications, certification of accuracy, authorization to conduct due diligence, and collect data. And finally, an anti-corruption compliance declaration. In addition to asking for all of this information, you must take care to document the entire process that your company goes through in investigating and creating a joint venture. In other words, document, document, document. It is equally important to remember that obtaining this information is only one step. A company must evaluate the information and follow up if responses to such inquiries warrant further action. A paper program is simply not good enough and can lead to serious consequences if red flags are not reviewed and cleared. This evaluation should also be documented so that if a regulator ever comes knocking, you can demonstrate what you asked for, why the response, your follow-up, and the details of your evaluation. And finally, never forget the human factor. It is important to perform in-person interviews of your proposed joint venture partner. It is important that you meet them, see their facilities, and assess them up close and personal. A U.S. business partner looking to engage a joint venture partner must consider the people who make up the joint venture partner. As compliance expert Mike Volkoff has noted, these people in turn act together and can be influences together as part of the joint venture's culture. This is the human factor. A global company cannot ignore the human factor of its joint venture partner. It has to assess the culture and, more importantly, the key personnel who are part of the joint venture partner, the leaders, the go-to people who get the job done, and the overall environment to which they operate. As you have to mesh what may be two very different cultures and understandings and compliance, it is important to assess how your potential joint venture partner will take these obligations before rather than after you ink the JV agreement. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, number one, joint venture due diligence must focus on the unique joint venture risks. And that's why I went through that detailed list of documents and information to ask for. Two, ask for a detailed list of information from your joint venture partner. If they do not uh, give it to you, uh, do not walk away, but run away. Or if they push back. And finally, number three, be sure to do an on-site investigation of your joint venture partner, focusing on the human element. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to thank you again for joining me for this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program around business ventures. And I hope you will join me for our next episode tomorrow. Also, I'd like to shout out to our sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, for sponsoring this month's podcast series. This podcast series on 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.